Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brent and today we have a Dodge Neon SRT4 for you that the owner took to get an e-check on back in 2018 after putting a brand new carbon fiber hood on with a ceramic coating. And unfortunately he didn't pass his e-checks. So instead of fixing those problems, he decided to just put the car in his garage and wait for a later date to maybe go ahead and change some stuff. But because of that, it's now 2022 and he decided to finally start getting this car ready for the road again. So he had it trailered to our shop. And if you take a look at these wheels, they're actually blue, even though they're covered in brake dust. We couldn't even tell that they were blue until we took a closer look at them. That's how much was on them. But moving on to the interior, that's where things got pretty gross because the owner told us that some water got in before he put the car away and he couldn't figure out where a leak was in his car and mold eventually started growing in many different places but that's something we were able to take care of and i want to say really quickly if you guys are not subscribed to our channel please take a second and hit that subscribe button because we have some really really cool content coming your way and lastly i want to hop into the question of the video so leave your answers in the comments below what is one thing that you're really proud that you've accomplished this year now starting with the wheels i want to say we always get people asking in our comments about what we use in our videos products wise and all that so we decided to start adding affiliate links to our friends over at Car Supplies Warehouse down in the description again. We've had their links in our description before, but we updated all of them for you guys and they have the best prices in town and they're great people. So the links are all down there in case you want anything that we're using in our videos. And at this point we knew there was probably a bunch of junk underneath the spoiler where it sat on the trunk so we went ahead and took it off and then cleaned underneath it and when he puts it back on it's usually a good idea to use 3m just to secure it to the trunk lid but there's at least bolts holding it down for now
After polishing the back trunk lid, we noticed that there was an etching in the paint that was probably from bird poop. So RJ took 3000 grit sandpaper in a KXK sanding block and sanded it down and then he polished it with Oberk compound and it came out looking perfect. All right, guys, so we decided to go ahead and call Jason Kilmer, who is our resident expert, who's been in the industry a lot longer than we have, to, uh, to help us address these, these sun-faded trim pieces on this Neon SRT4. So, Jason, how are you? Good. Good. How about yourself? Good, good. Having, uh, having lots of fun with this, this dirty Neon. How, uh, how would you go about, because uh, Jason, seems, you've already seen the pictures of the, of the sun-faded trim, and it's, it's pretty chalky. What do you think the, the, the best and safest way to, uh, to try and remove that oxidation would be? A lot of times it's just take a polish or a compound and, and try to remove that oxidation. Think of it as kind of single stage paint. You just want to, you know, take away that oxidation that has formed on top of the rubber or plastics. Gotcha, gotcha. So um, in this case, it'd be really hard to get a, a pad 
uh, into into that area. So just use a um, a microfiber towel and, and either use a, a sanding block or a finger. Yeah. Uh, in that case, with that rubber, it's best to wrap uh, a towel around your finger and just kind of old school work it by hand. It, it's not fun and it takes time. And then as the towel becomes clogged with residue, you switch to a fresh piece just like you would a buffing pad and then just keep on rubbing and then a little bit more compound or polish and keep the process up. Gotcha, gotcha. And alternatively, using a heat gun wouldn't work because it wouldn't last as long. It would actually diminish the um, the in- integrity of uh, of that plastic, and it wouldn't it wouldn't yeah. last very long at all, would it? Yes, and you're not actually removing the oxidation; you're just heating it up. So I've done it before with not much great success. Actually, it was a, a large failure. Um, but with that piece with oxidation, just like paint, you want to remove it and get rid of it, um, and then they put you know. Uh, a spray wax or even like a sealant or something to protect it from oxidizing further down the road. Gotcha, gotcha. And sometimes with those different types of materials and plastics, sometimes it is too far gone. So, um, and always do a small inconspicuous spot before doing the whole trim area. So you're not like, oh, wow, I, I really messed it up now. So if you mess a small spot up, it's a, it's a tiny spot. Look at it see if it's if you're going in the right direction um and then um if it works great they keep on uh keep on you know hand rubbing it out cool all right well i think that's gonna be the plan of action we will we'll try that out and uh hope for the best awesome well good luck guys and uh, have fun all right thanks And as you guys can see in this before and after, they turned out magnificent. So please go give Jason a follow on Instagram. He's so smart when it comes to detailing and such a good guy. We really appreciate him for helping us out. And also, if you guys didn't already know this from our last video, RJ and Jason started a podcast where they talk about all things detailing. It's called Spit Shine. The links to that podcast will be down in the description if you guys want to check it out. I listened to it myself and I really enjoyed it. I think you guys will too. But what I'm doing here to finish up on the wheels, I wanted to make them shine just a little extra because they're painted. So I used a ceramic sealant on the rims and then I dressed the tires and they came out looking so good. So for the vacuuming, we were actually sent a new product by a brand called Buff Bright, and this is not a paid sponsorship. We just wanted to give it a try for you guys and give you our honest review. And what this product does, it goes on the end of your vacuum and it's really good for dog hair. So imagine what a lily brush does or an anilin brush, how it has those silicone or rubber gaskets on the end of them to get the hairs out of the fibers. It's the same thing, but it's on the end of your vacuum. So you're basically using an anilin or lily brush and a vacuum at the same time. And we tested it out and it worked really well. So if you guys want to check it out and you want to even purchase one yourselves, I'll leave a link to that in the description below.
smells of burnt out and your heart makes no sound i'll find that so for any kind of extracting, our process is always the same. We start out by dampening the carpet a little bit with some water out of the extractor. And our extractor only has water in it, no soap, nothing like that. And we'll spray the soap on from a separate bottle and then drill brush it in to agitate it. And then we'll go ahead and extract it with the extractor. Comment below what the liquid that comes out of the extractor looks like. And if you've made it this far in the video and you enjoyed it, please take a second and give it a like. It really helps us out and we appreciate it a lot. So to finish up the car, the first thing we had to do were take care of all the windows. And when we talked to the owner, he mentioned that he had to peel the tint off the front windows. So the first thing we had to do was get all the residue off with a razor. And let me tell you guys, this is a really time consuming process, but it has to be done for these details and it makes the difference at the end. And then after that, we use a ceramic sealant on the entire car to make sure it's a little bit protected for at least a few weeks if not a few months if it's not driven and it gives it an overall nice shine